my Mr. President. Before I begin my presentation, I would like uh, to follow our formal procedures and cultural practices. By way of first paying my respects to the President of MC UCC, President of the other two sections around the region, and the Center Chief Delegation Chief, Marshall Islands, Michael Yoga, and other participants around the island and other places. Before I proceed, uh, maybe it is good that I uh, introduce myself and the team from the national government. So, first, uh, the gentleman sitting down there is my immediate supervisor. He's the assistant secretary of the Department of Health and Social Affairs. Division of Social Affairs, Mr. Stuart Benyon. My name is August Su. I am like the president of the session. My mother is from the Marshall Islands. She goes by the name of Nanako Benjamin. In Bombay, she is known as Gosi Su. Just a little side uh, story on that. So I had some ideas that came down from around 2014. And they knew my mother as Namigo. I never knew my mother as Namigo. I always knew her as Rosie. So they came to the house and said, we're looking for Namigo. Benjamin. Sorry, no Namigo Benjamin. Only Rosie <laughs> Okay, come on. And they went back. Later they came back and said, no, she lives here. I said, no way. <laughs> My mother said, it's Rosie. Can we see her? Mom, there are some folks from Marshall. They're looking for Nanko. Oh, that's where Marshall is saying. So oh, my goodness, maybe it's our humility. Thank you very much. Uh, along with that, uh, on behalf of the Secretary of the Department of Health and Social Affairs, I would like to extend this sincere and utmost uh, appreciation for your invitation. With that, I also received a phone call that from the technical team that said that they were thrilled. You asked them some questions that really put them in the corner. And I have to say, as said, Secretary and I, expect no less. Please ask us as many questions as we can facilitate responses to us in your work as ministers and workers of the youth and the general public. So with that, please allow me to begin. So, I will be presenting on, um, I, I take a lot of thought as to should I be presenting on the work that I'm doing, the national government new office, or should I present the views that we find as to work with the, the livelihood of the youth around the nation. I thought it would be proper that I present to you what I gather from the youth around FS. So with that, if I may ask the uh, our humble technician. Next. So my presentation, I will try to cover the subjectives with you. The general background of what the FSM youth composition is. Discuss the successes that they have, some of the challenges, and the plan that we are envision to move forward with. So, I apologize, I tried to grab something into one page, but before I, uh, as a secretary and I leave, we will leave our information to you in case you will need to ask further questions on the tobacco tree section or once you hear the report, our email and phone number so you can reach out to us in case you need or have more questions than you. So, the national government, the definition of the youth that we work with in the four states and around the region 
is really all persons, male, including female, and females, uh, between the ages of 15 and 34. And we have to also share that the general consensus in UN and other international and regional national partners, they use the age of 30 to 25. The WB population from the last census, uh, we were expecting we would have the next census was around 21, yeah? Unfortunately, it was like, uh, like I came around, uh, what's his name? COVID? <laughs> really messed things up. So we have to move things, push things back. So hopefully in May, we will have the findings from the census guide our work going forward. And when I get that information, with our contact information, you can reach out to us and we'll share this. But generally, from the 2010 census, youth between the ages of 50 and 34, from the census, the number fell around 35,558. So what does that picture represent to us? Well, I think I'm going to go back a little bit to give a bit of a in that graph, up on the left hand side, the small for you, but the years that we picked out the work with is 2000, 2004, and 2010. That we have concrete evidence of the population number. So, 2010, the number was way less. In 2000, the number was less than 2004, which is in 2004, in 2000, the population of FSM was somewhere around 36,850. In 2004, they took another household income expense surveillance for a survey, and the number that they came up with is 38,603. So we went up about 20,000 more, or 2,004 numbers up. But in 2010, the youth population dropped from 38,000 to 35,000. That's really a significant number of decline. Two, in 2000, had about uh, 18,000. Portland, 11,000. Young, 3,000. Pashrai, 2,000. So, two, I always have the number around 50% uh, percent or 45. Both they are 45. Young, around 11. And Pashrai, around 6% of the population. That's how it's been since 2000 when we started census until now. Protections that have been taken, the numbers remain around there. Okay, uh, we, we have a lot of ideas why the number has dropped. And it keeps dropping. One, you may have noticed the migration abroad. Two, the nation, the person, and other jurisdictions around the Pacific have Broadcasted or inform the general public that we have a very serious health issue. Ladies and gentlemen, we currently have a crisis in the nation, non communicable diseases such as hypertension, heart, diabetes, and other things. Yes, this is an art affecting our population, not just of all the young, but also the youth. They're also looking for employment. You notice that a lot of our kids, including my I'm young, but I also have kids that graduate from the college. Uh, I'm one of the late starters. I have a daughter who graduated from the University of Guam, major in public health. Specifically in epidemiology. Epidemiology is a set of surveillance of the kind of 
that pops up in that different area. So this kind of people they go around in the defense and like, defend the day and they investigate what kind of sicknesses have come up. So like for sure it's currently experiencing uh, dengue fever. Dengue fever is only transmitted by mosquito. And not any mosquito carries the same with you. Certain types of mosquitoes. These mosquitoes are found in now we know that we have it in Portugal and in Yang. We don't have it here. Not let me correct my statement. We haven't found the mosquito type that carries this virus here. Mm -hmm. In Portugal, we don't have it so far. Keep breaking. So the number of the decline and rise of the population depends on a lot of factors. Education. We only have one college here, College of Migration, sections the, the different uh, island states. We have College of Marshall Islands. But they're very limited in the fields that they offer for our students to be able to come back out with a bachelor's degree, mostly education and nursing. But the other thing is that we require a, a person in the state also, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need teachers, we need engineers, but we don't have these specific needs in the colleges. They finished from Sion or College of Marshall Islands. But the other two systems you don't have to choose. Economic development in terms of employment is very low, unfortunately. So, government seems to be functioning, running on the employment. And we seem to think that these are the guys on our Should be bowed down too. But unfortunately, Government workers are servants to you. The focus that I see when I talk to you, those guys up there, uh, it's really hard to go. No, it's the other way around. You should be comfortable, the youth, please inform the youth, they should be comfortable to come to the national government and the state government and demand their rights to have employment, good education, good health, because they're there to serve. I am a public servant. But we seem to have a mentality in our country that when you're working in the government, ah, oh, you're way up there. No, it's the other way around. We're here to serve the general public. Anyway, let's keep going forward. Next slide, please. So, what are the successes that I've seen? Some of the successes. I've seen as the youth progress in our national and state institutions or area. So we have every two years we have a biannual conference where we bring in youths to discuss what are the issues that are out there. And through this platform, every two years. We, the national government, our partners from SCC, is that we are the PMIUM, the embassies, and other partners with the state leadership. You, we go around the states and we gather information and talk with the youth leaders, government, the NGOs. What are your challenges? What are your needs? How can we facilitate assistance? from outside into the country, to the state, to the community level. And this dialogue brings about uh, a plan going forward. So, currently, we are entering into a phase that we have to develop a national youth policy. This youth policy normally runs for five years. And this document gathers all the information from the different states, from the NGOs, uh, from the faith-based farmers, from fishermen, 
musicians, government workers, what are the challenges we face, and fishers that can take us out of these challenges. These are one of the successes that we have going on right now. We are currently soliciting the state's input as we will start with this the state to say we need to put together another policy to carry us forward the next five years. Along with these policies, we will create action plans from each of the states so that these action plans will specifically address the state's needs for you. The national will only carry what is the overall consensus from the states. And our focus in this work going forward, we will attach what has not been attached before, the budget, so that we can present it to the leaders of the state, the legislators, the lawmakers, the governors, and the court, and the traditional leaders. How we can work together to better assist the human parties. Um, I did not mention, but currently the makeup of our breakdown of youth carries about 40% of the population. Oh, 40%. That's, that's a whole lot. That means that 20% is given to the age of youth and 20% is given for 30% to ages above 35 and 30% to ages below you know, 30. So we need to, as a body, come together and strike that something better, equip, educate, formulate a youth who will next, who will be sitting in the seats that you are sitting today, whether it's spiritual, education, knowing them, traditional, what have we need to start forming these minds from when they're young. We're also conducting uh, what we call the youth mapping and youth reporting. So prior to the uh, COVID leaving the country, I was working with UNICEF and other partners to see how we can go out and map all the youth groups, register with the government and not register. The vision behind that was to, if we have a natural disaster in the countries that we have, the most able one that can respond are the youth. How do we utilize this youth? So I work with you and other partners to come up with a uh, system, electronic system, so that when we go out and meet in Sabwa, in Thor, in uh, anywhere up, the groups of you that are out there, after we talk to them, we pinpoint exactly GPS pinpoint where these suits are at. Specifically by degrees. So when a disaster hits in one of the islands, we can specifically pinpoint the youth that are there and say, please mobilize and assist in this specific area where they have typhoon, landslide, high tide, or, for example, the boat. During the COVID outbreak, you that we map went around the islands and surveyed who understands what is COVID. What are, why are they scared to take a vaccination? Did someone tell them some kind of funky story? In fact, we want to ooh, at this school to kind of educate the teachers and the parents, CTA and the students, what is COVID and what is the importance of getting the vaccination? 
When we arrived there, there were new guards that arrived before us, and the parents, the teachers, and the principal. Hey, please come, you know, these, these guys are out here, and they're really saying that God does not want vaccination. 666 is in the vaccination. So we face these kinds of resistance. Unfortunately, we have people out there that they come up with their own ideas, but we try to present the facts. So the youth mapping is trying to do this. Hopefully when it comes around to your churches or your denominations or your communities, please um, encourage them to participate in, in these exercises because one day it will help to mobilize the resources, human resources that we need when we have a crisis. So during the COVID-19, some houses uh, or people in the houses were asked not to go out into the general public because they will transmit their the COVID-19 virus to other people. So we employ this youth that we've already mapped out to go to those houses, get their money on their behalf, go get their shopping, or get their firewood, or get their water, and bring it to the house, but they're not allowed to go. So those are the kind of ideas that the map does. You report it, as you can see up there. Uh, we noticed that a lot of, how many of you have cell phones? This phrase you have. Oh, I see some have cell phones that they're not raising their hands, but they're <laughs> almost everyone has cell phones. Every, almost everywhere have internet connectivity. Isolation from two. Just sign a one million dollar contract with U.S. Embassy to pilot uh, uh, work a project that will enable all the other islands to access to internet connectivity. MSM is currently working with World Bank to do what they call um, internet connectivity and ele electronic availability for all gender. So this exercise in the next couple years will most likely enable all the other islands to have access to internet. Last night, I was watching this clip on Facebook. Yes, I do watch Facebook too sometimes. And I was watching a sermon. And this pastor held up the cell phone and he says, cell phone is a good thing, but we can misuse applications that we can do. Cell phone can bring the world to your kid. And I was thinking, what does this mean? It can bring the good things as well as the bad things. Yeah, I went on to say that your kid can also enter the world through the cell phone. I was thinking maybe he can progress through affiliation, through if he has or she has innovations and ideas, and bring this to the general public. So you reporting is applied to youth ages, and we, we put out, so we hear something like, uh, there is a new TikTok idea running around. What do you think? Is it applicable to your life and your culture and your religion? And they respond. And we take this information to give us ideas. What are the good things that the youth are experiencing electronically around the island? You report also informs us whether these youths 
are hearing through the different platforms in the internet about projects that are offered from different entities like Foreign Affairs, UNFPA, UNICEF, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, SCC, or six institutions that give up grants to youth, churches, to you name it, different groups. Grassroots projects, up to funding, free funding to go to school. There is also a platform where we facilitate for the youth around the nation to participate in the UN discussion of all youth members around the world to discuss the needs, innovative ideas, what's out there, what's good, what's not good in different regions, exchange good ideas, good practices and hopefully not bad practices. So, our office tried to help different youth members. Of course, we have limited funding, but the funding that we have, so for example, you may hear two saying, how come we're not going this year? Yeah, how come we're not going this year? So with the limited funding that we can get, we try to go pay. Every year, there is a new one, youth, so this year we may be able to fund two youth from different states. Next year we will take So if you hear the uh, officers from your state or jurisdiction for that, please remind them that this goes around because of the limited funding that we have. Sometimes we get enough resources and we bring everyone. We also have projects in all the states, in all the public schools, to address issues uh, with six, seven, and eight graders in all the public schools. This project starts with the students of the eight graders. We think this way because we think that, and from our interactions with science people, experiences these are from straight going up that's when you start to form your own ideas. Your ideas start to sprout, become open to things that are happening around you. So for example, sixth grade, you start experiencing uh, practicing peer pressures, experiencing these and so the colleagues and can you see the benefits from that child and can you use Start to be small, and then it moves up to maybe like pulling your, your class tape when you're in seventh grade. You go to eighth grade, you start to you know, blur the bones in the rooms. Yes, unfortunately, we have documented facts of children having babies at the age of 12 or 13, unfortunately. Although we have consent form laws, consent laws, and says uh, a girl, I know here in Kobe we have a law that says when you're under such age, you cannot be, uh, have close relationships with the different sex. If you get caught with this law, you can do okay. But at the same time, we do not have a jail for two commands. So we come up with these laws that are good, yet we do not have a service. I, I am pretty sure that in all the jurisdictions we have here, we have jails, right? Yes. But do we have services that would rehabilitate or we just lock them up and then throw them back out to the fire department? We don't have those. And if I'm not mistaken, most of these folks that are in the jails fall between that age of 15 to 35. Because they're the active life cycle trained in the police. Why I do So this personal responsibility education program tries to 
Lord, I have a young age too. Teach the children to 